Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby challenge video and today we're going to go ahead and review the outside the box challenge final submissions. So first off I just want to start off by saying thank you to everybody who participated in the most recent hobby challenge. Um, this was a two month challenge about doing a single figure or unit or something that was outside of your comfort zone. Uh, maybe a type of miniature you don't normally paint, a size, a scheme, uh, anything like that. Uh, basically, we all tend to fall into patterns, I think, when we paint. We tend to stick to things we like. Maybe we don't ever do non-metallic metal, or maybe we don't ever do clean miniatures, or don't ever do dirty-looking miniatures, or whatever. Whatever the, your particular example may be, there are certainly probably techniques that some of us find frightening, and it can be a little intimidating. So this was a challenge all about stepping outside of that comfort zone and giving it a shot. And we had a lot of great uh, submissions here that I wanted to... I'll walk everybody through, and at the end, we'll talk about the categories, and you can vote for uh, the winners in these various categories and make your voice heard. The link, by the way, to vote is down in the description of this video, so go ahead and click that, and you will be able to vote. The voting will be open until uh, midnight Eastern, uh, Saturday the 14th. In other words, at the end of Saturday. Let's call it 11.59 p.m., Eastern uh, on the 14th of October 2017. There we go. That's specific. So let's get looking at some some of our uh, budgeteers entries here. So first up, uh, Arter uh, from uh, Tabletop Miniature Solutions uh, showed some of the painted terrain from his Kickstarter. And these look really great. I've got to say these came out super wonderful. Like I love these little pieces of terrain. I love small terrain like this because, you know, when I see this, I don't see terrain. I see basing material. Like I look at that little building on the left and I'm like, oh, I can just picture that going on a base, putting a little flying guy standing on top of that, maybe a little vampire type of thing. Yeah, perfect. Or maybe the, you know, the little chapel on the right side, perfect amount, maybe like a, uh, you know, a big monster on something like that. Like maybe the zombie dragon I have coming from uh, TMS's Kickstarter that I purchased. So might have to pick up that. So really good work here. Lots of nice color variation. The stone looks wonderful. Um, he really, like, I, I really like, especially set, look at the green up that kind of ran out of the water spout at the top there. Very nice touches. Uh, Archer did a great job. Next up, we have Bethany Graham, who I know uh, this was a big step outside her comfort zone as far as the grossness of it and painting the more Nurgle model, this rusty grossness. And I will say this is tough for me to look at, just not because it's bad, actually because it is so good. Um, as anybody who follows me regularly knows, I have a problem with Nurgle models and things like that. Uh, and this is absolutely disgusting in all the right wonderful ways. Um, so many great tones. I particularly like the oxidation. Uh, on the copper weapons that he has. I thought that, I think that looks really nice. But just the wonderful purples and reds and browns and everything worked into that rotten skin tone. Uh, just a magnificent uh, sort of Nurgle lord here. All right, next up we've got Death of Billy Pete, and, uh, who pushed himself in a lot of ways with this. Uh, he's got... A, you know, some more freehand, both on the shield as well as the cape. I had to get both of those pictures in just to make sure that we could see both of them because I know he put a lot of work into both parts of the freehand. Um, but also then into a little bit of uh, sort of OSL there from the white glowing sword. Um, so uh, great use of the uh, hero base here from uh, the, the Age of Sigmar basing kit uh, and a very nice... Uh, really nice Chaos Warrior with a lot of individual character. Great way to take what's basically a normal Chaos Warrior and turn him into a hero. Uh, so, yeah, kudos. Next up, we've got Forge of Wonders, Kieran Dunlevy, my co-host from the PMP Reviews, uh, who pushed himself here with both with a couple of interesting techniques. First, the diorama basing, uh, but you notice he's shooting some Womp Rats out there, clearly. Uh, but also pushing himself with a non-metallic metal work. And as well, if you look toward the back of the bike, you'll see he's got some kicking up dirt, a sort of like dirty cotton effect, which I think looks really neat. Um, he's been trying to do and play around with airy effects like mist and dust and dirt and smoke and 
trying to model that in some realistic ways. So I think that came out very cool. Um, I would highly recommend that you check this out on the PMP page. As uh, I, I will say, Kieran, you didn't have a single picture that I particularly loved the angle of. Uh, so, you know, maybe maybe that. But I would encourage you to look at all the pictures he has of this. He does have some amazing work he's done on that and, and MM. So definitely take a look at that. All right, next up, we've got Harlem Bad Dunkers and his uh, Orc Megaboss on Maw Crusher. Truly one of my more favorite models. Uh, very fun inner flame style here with the crack sort of being the lighter color um, versus the, you know, darker scales. Uh, very nice blue and orange contrast there. You know, always love it. And he's got a great looking uh, lava base that looks real nice. So very cool. Jacob Wallman is our next mission, doing a very nice crisp stormcast in the, the bright magenta colors here with these Knight Azeros. Uh, so I, I particularly like the sort of tarnished silver he used for this. I think it actually looks really nice. It has some very soft and subtle brown tones to it that I think work really well with the, uh, the pink of the lantern and the wings and the feathers and such. Next up, James Denny. Uh, who is the first of three uh, Marines mounted on a base with a pipe. So apparently, this is all the rage these days, and I support that. Like, there's a lot of, a lot of exposed pipe work in the 40k universe. Um, so here he's got his Terminator, um, very cool uh, build here, and such wonderful, vibrant yellow. You know, anybody who's tried to paint yellow knows it's a... A difficult color to make look good and look smooth and vibrant, and he has certainly succeeded here. I mean, I will say he really, he really makes it stand out against that, you know, deep red sort of, uh, let's call it Martian base. So, very cool. All right, now we've got uh, Jarex, who had two little submissions here, which I think work well off each other. We have his uh, Moon Clan Goblin, as well as his Dwarf. He said he didn't normally paint either of these sort of models and so this is kind of he sort of pushed himself in two directions with his with both of these the mortal enemies as it were of uh of goblin and dwarf uh really nice work you know he had some questions about the gem you know in his original comments he wondered if the gem worked because it's more of a square shape I, th I think it works actually quite well i think he did a good job with the uh, gem and the hair looks really nice um i particularly like the metal work on the moon uh, of the standard bearers as well i think that looks really great so Good stuff. Jeff Palicki, who's a newer member of the PMP and a newer hobbyist in general. So these were sort of some Marines he picked up, and this was some of his first models he ever painted. He didn't quite get as far as he wanted or get them all done, but I wanted to include it anyways because he did get the one guy in the middle there done. So there you go. Um, obviously, he's still working his way through his, uh, his Ultramarines. But uh, Jeff, welcome, and we're, we're glad to have you. And I think when you're first starting, everything is outside of your comfort zone. So we're glad to have you along on the challenge. Next up, we've got Laurent Gillett with his uh, battle sister here. And uh, I will say I particularly like this. I, I like the, uh, the, the, the model. I'm always a fan of uh, heavy armored female figures. I think those look really cool. I think this is a nice looking model. I think the gold looks... Uh, a wonderful sort of antique uh, brown gold. So, yeah, really nice. Matthew Hoffman with his Troll Abomination or Abomination Troll or something like that. I don't remember what its full name was. Uh, but for a board game miniature, he certainly did a very nice job with it because I know that the cast on this isn't perhaps as perfect as it could be, but I, th I thought he did a really good job of uh, taking this very funny-sized, you know, out-of-proportion miniature and making it look... Very cool, uh, very vibrant green screen, green skin, with a nice, uh, nice set off there to the sort of blue hair, and I, you'll notice he kind of balanced that out by having that same bluish purplish tone reflected in the nails uh, of the creature. Next up, our old friend Paul Cunert with his uh, Death Guard from the new Dark Imperium box. Uh, wonderful work on these guys, Paul. I know they were a long time in, in progress. Paul did a bunch of videos on his channel about the armor and making the bases and all of that sort of thing. So if you want to see how any of those things are done, just check out Paul's channel. It's under his name right there. 
and uh, you can see some pretty great tutorials on how he achieved all of it. But I think they look wonderful. Uh, and by that I mean gross, as all as all Nurgle things are. When it comes to Nurgle, the words gross and good are generally interchangeable. Our second of the pipe-standing Marines, uh, Paul Marcroft, uh, who did this wonderful Space Marine Captain uh, with his sword. Uh, what I like about this is it's very stark, the way he, he's standing there, and I like his color choices of the uh, tan but somewhat browned and dirty uh, tabard and shoulder. I think that's a really nice contrast to the black, which is in itself a really nice contrast to the red. So he, of the sort of earth, he's got a wonderful... Um, Got a wonderful set of contrasting colors there with still pulling the red throughout the whole thing to balance it out. So, you know, when you look at the hilt and the purity seal on the skull and the shoulder and the underside of the cloak. So all in all, I thought this was looks really, really nice. And it's a wonderful use of, uh, of black as well because it actually has some nice color to it, some nice vibrancy. Peel Tag is our next submitter with another Nurgle thing. Pop Nurgle's popular in this competition and I, I think that's understandable i think you either love or hate nurgle and so either you paint it all the time or you just don't paint it at all so i think we had a lot of people step outside and try a little nurgle and just just try a little nurgle uh so peel tag did a wonderful job here with his weathering especially let's look at the corrosion on the helm the shoulder that axe um, but i especially want to call your attention to the armor greaves on the model's legs which I think just look absolutely fantastic. The rusting effect that he did on the armor plating on the legs is really top-notch, and I just love the way that came out. So, wonderful-looking Lord of Plagues. All right, next up, Radek, who did this uh, great female Slayer model on a, on a very big base. Uh, just kind of a little scenic diorama, so I noticed that was part of how we wanted to to, to push it. Um, and I think this came out well. The stripes of the pants, especially, like, for being freehand and doing stripes, I know how hard it can be to get those clean. I'd like to draw everybody's attention to not only how clean those stripes are, but how wonderfully highlighted they are, where the lighter colors are sort of being uh, caught along with the white of the pants underneath. So I thought that was a really great, uh, a really great touch. Good tattoo work. Also, which is always hard to do, but between her face tattoo and her arm, um, he's got some wonderful sort of, I, I would call it woad or Celtic style tattoos on this model, which I think is, of course, completely appropriate for for a, uh, a Slayer. All right, next up, Rob V. Johnson, who did the uh, sort of Vermin Lord by night. He wanted to do an extremely desaturated, almost nighttime color scheme. Uh, and I think this came out really interesting. Whether it reads as nighttime or not, I think the blue is a really interesting choice. I think it does make him look very sneaky and assassin-like, as though he would just meld with the shadows. Uh, I also got to give a full props to the Stegodon head as, you know, the sort of foot basing prop there. Way better than the normal, like, tiny rock or whatever this guy is standing on. So, very, very cool, uh... Uh, conversion there and i love the bright vibrant green of the dagger the grand wombat uh another new member of our of our uh community who's also just you know taken up painting recently and uh finished a really nice uh space marine here great use of some some fun blue and red balanced around the mini so we we're happy to see that, again, when you're a new painter, you know, realistically, everything is outside of your comfort zone. So, hey, there you go. Any finished mini is a good mini. Tom Philbrick, who's been pushing himself lately in general, and now tried it with his bust, which is actually meant to be painted like one of his dogs, which I love. I love this guy. This is Mario the dog, I believe. Little space dog. Um, his dog, I don't think, normally walks around with a space suit on. Although, I don't know. You don't know. Don't judge him. Uh, but I love this. This is so fantastic. The detail, the slight shading of, like, the pink tones around the nose and the eyes, the little spots of color, and the very slightly stippled spots and stuff like that, uh, as well as all the weathering that looks really nice. It's minimal but very effective on the sort of space suit itself. 
Um, I think that all just looks absolutely fantastic. Uh, not to mention the fact that he nailed the sucker, that sort of rainbow sucker. Um, so I think that's just adorable. Wonderfully well done bust that I, I really greatly enjoyed. I, I think, Tom, this is just fantastic work. Next up, we've got Grandmaster Voldus uh, in his Terminator armor with his big giant hammer. This was done by Victor Case, who is a, an exceptional artist and a well-known part of the community. He uh, he decided to challenge himself with doing an all you know non-metallic metal uh, Space Marine, and I think for the most part he succeeded here. I think this is a great-looking example of NMM, uh, and it's a wonderfully well-executed, very clean as per Victor standard uh, paint job on this guy. I think he came out really great. So very well done, sir. Also, let's, before I go ahead, I just, one more thing I want to mention, that face. What a wonderful face. He really captured the emotion, the expression, and the tonal variation in that face. So just want, I didn't want to leave that behind. Finally, myself, my own item, uh, and number three in the uh, Marines on Pipes collection. Uh, this is my, whatever this guy is called, Death Guard Lord or whatever, Death Lord. I don't know. Also out of the Dark Imperium box. Uh, this guy was actually super fun to paint. I did him in the more classic 30k era Death Guard coloration because I don't like the new green, but I really like the I really like the old colors. Uh, that sort of white green, uh, white green gray I would almost call it. This was an experiment to see if I could do the whole miniature in a very desaturated fashion. So it was really fun to push myself. And I ended up doing a tutorial on the base as well as the uh, smoke and mist and stuff like that. So um, if you're curious, you can go back and reference those. But I actually really liked painting this guy. And I have to say, as long as it's a, a marine, I would probably paint another Nurgle model. So there you go. That leads us to our categories. So the last uh, slide here we're going to touch on is our categories. We've got best painted, which is fairly obvious. You should evaluate the paint job. Most creative, which has to do with conversions and how much they put into it. Best effort. Uh, best effort is somebody who stepped the farthest outside, tried something that seems the most risky um, or, or the most crazy. Huge amounts of NMM over a thing or reflections, stuff like that. That's what I wanted to capture with best effort. Somebody who clearly not only pushed themselves, but went way above and beyond. And then, of course, we got fan favorite. And what I want you to vote for with fan favorite is just your favorite of the bunch for whatever reason you like. And uh, we're going to leave the polls open, as I said, until 11.59 p.m. Eastern, October 14th, 2017. The link to vote is in the description, so feel free to go ahead and vote for your favorites. If you are not a member of the PMP and you would like to join us for future hobby challenges, we do these every other month or so. They vary in length from one month to six months. Uh, but if you are interested in joining us on your own personal hobby journey, the only requirement to join us is that you want to take you the next step in your own personal journey. Nothing more, nothing less. We, we accept everybody from... Newbies who just started out to masters who've been painting for decades and we're happy to have you along. As long as you're trying to improve or share and be positive about the hobby, then you have a place in our community. So the link for that will also be in the video description down below. Feel free to click that and uh, join up. But don't forget to vote. That's down there. But as always, appreciate you watching and we'll see you next time.